This is a heat pump. These are my actual gas bills from last year. Now, if you were to believe everything you read in the Daily Mail, this will always be more expensive than using gas. That's just utter nonsense. And today I'm going to show you exactly why using a heat pump, even if you don't have a smart meter, smart tariffs, batteries, solar, or any of those advantages, this is still going to be cheaper to run than your gas bills. So if that sounds like something you're interested in and you want to be able to do this with your gas bills, then hang around. Great, now I've got to go and pick all that up. So I picked up all my litter, we're back in the office and we're going to answer the question today, is gas really cheaper than a heat pump? Because all of the, should we say, the right-leaning media seems to think that heat pumps are some sort of conspiracy to make us pay more for our energy. And it's just not true. I mean, spoiler alert, if you don't want to watch to the end of the video, um, it is not true. And I'm going to show you that today with real data. We're going to take my energy bills from this time last year, um, my gas bills specifically. We're going to then take my actual energy use data from the heat pump. We're going to compare four different tariffs from four different companies. So if you're not an Octopus customer, you're an Eon customer, we're going to compare four different tariffs. And to make it as fair as possible, we're not going to include any requirement for a smart meter. We're not going to require you to have a smart tariff. We're not going to include solar and batteries or anything else. It is going to be a pure fixed rate energy contract for your electricity versus my actual gas usage. Before we get started, the one thing I want to make very clear here is everyone obsesses over the COP, the coefficient of performance of heat pumps. And you'll hear people throwing around terms and, and sentences like, if you don't have a COP of four, then it's no, there's no point getting a heat pump. Or heat pumps only work if your house is really well insulated. All of this is nonsense. I hate to tell you this, but heat doesn't discriminate whether it comes from a heat pump or from a gas boiler. If you have a really badly insulated house, heat is going to leak out. doesn't matter what generated that heat, that heat is going to leak out. But the obsession seems to be around this idea that you need a coefficient of performance of four, um, otherwise it's just not financially viable. Now, I have never had a coefficient of performance of four out of my heat pump, um, but I'm going to show you actual data today that shows why we shouldn't be obsessing over coefficients of performance. Let's be honest, we don't pay our bills in COPs. COP is you know, not even mentioned on my electricity bill. Um, I pay my bill in pounds sterling. And that's what we're going to look at today. Actual costs in pounds, not in any other form of currency. Um, so apologies if you're watching this from another country. Um, I'm sure you can do the conversion, but I'm going to give you the numbers in pounds sterling. Now, until we ado adopt the COP as our currency, let's just forget about it and let's take a look at the data. So as I said, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to use my actual gas bills, what I actually paid from December 2023 through to May 2024. Now, you could make an argument that the weather might be slightly different, but when you average out all of these numbers across multiple years, what you'll find is there might be a 1% to 2% variance, but it's not going to make a material difference just because we use gas bills from a year ago. Um, we're going to use actual data from my energy monitor that shows the exact number of kilowatt hours that the heat pump used for both heating and hot water. And then we're going to calculate those costs across the four fixed rate tariffs. Um, I was hoping to do it across five tariffs, but British Gas seemed to want to collect every single piece of data about me before they'll even tell me what the price is going to be. So British Gas, sorry, you're excluded because you seem to have turned into a data mining organization rather than an energy supplier. And as I said, we're not going to factor in solar batteries, smart tariffs, or even the requirement to have a smart meter. Now, just to be clear, this is the most expensive way you could possibly buy electricity if you had a heat pump. And Anyone who has a heat pump is not going to do this. So what I'm going to show you today is the absolute worst case scenario. 
anyone with a heat pump will probably be on a smart tariff, uh, maybe have solar, maybe have battery. So we'll get much, much better figures than I'm about to show you. As I say, we're going to compare this across four, four suppliers. That is Octopus Energy, Eon, EDF, and Ecotricity. All of those were, were able to give me um, the pricing just based on where I am in the country. Now, again, I'm going to show you the prices that I was given. They may vary slightly regionally, and certainly your standing charge will vary depending on where you are in the country. But again, these will make a very small percentage difference to the actual numbers. If after all of this, you still don't believe that heat pumps are, aren't going to bankrupt you, then uh, by all means, go take your money, subscribe to the Daily Mail. I'm sure you'll be very happy. Now, I get a lot of stick in the comments. Um, people say that, you know, I'm too hard on the Daily Mail. Um, I use the Daily Mail as a, a good example because they have consistently over the years just produced absolute nonsense that is unsustainable. Um, here is a great example. Um, this is from 2005, I believe, um, when the Daily Mail tried to tell its readers that the internet might just be a passing fad and millions are giving up on it. Um, yeah, millions gave up on it, did they, Daily Mail? Um, this is why nothing you read in that paper is true. It is all just utter nonsense made to sell newspapers back in those days and nowadays to sell ads on the website. Okay, enough of that. Let's start with Octopus Energy. So Octopus Energy have a tariff which is known as the 12-month fixed. Um, it is a fixed electricity only tariff. The prices in here in the east of England uh, were 25.6 pence per kilowatt hour and a standing charge of 47.28 pence per day. Now, I'm going to put a series of tables on the screen. I will give you it in graph form if you if you can't read them. But uh, let me in fact, let me make them just a little bit bigger, and hopefully uh, they're a bit more readable there. But what you can see here in this table is obviously down the left-hand side are the months that we're comparing against from a gas point of view. What I actually paid um, those bills that I ripped up a few minutes ago that was the amount that I paid in each of those months for gas. Now the next column is the amount of energy I used uh, 12 months later. Obviously I can't compare the exact months because I had gas and I got rid of it. Now we've got a heat pump. So we're comparing December 23 to December 24, January 24 to January 25. But in uh, December, you can see there uh, 388.2 kilowatts. And then as we go down the column, you'll see January, February, much colder. Um, we use 607 and 438 kilowatts respectively. The column after that, we have our standing charge, and the column after that, we have our VAT. So again, because the gas bills include the gas standing charge and they include the VAT on that energy, um, I've included both of those to make this as close as I possibly can. Then the final column, uh, final two columns, so we've got our total for electricity, so what did it actually cost us in total for electricity, and then we've got the difference between the gas and the electricity bill. Now the two boxes you can see they're in red. One is the total cost for that six month period for the gas, and one is the total cost for electricity on that tariff, that, that fixed 12 month tariff for electricity. So gas would have been 795 pounds and 54p, and that is exactly what I paid to Ecotricity for gas for that period, and the electricity would be 595 pounds and 15 pence, saving you 200 pounds and 39p over that six month period. So in the worst possible case scenario on Octopus Energy, you are going to be £200 better off over a six-month period. Now, as we go through each of the providers, I'm going to put a little graph at the bottom of the screen that just shows the savings for that particular uh, energy provider. So Octopus, we're at £200. Next, we're going to look at Eon. Eon, um, again, famous for being you know, slightly lower cost than most other providers out there have Eon fixed for 12 months. Uh, this is version 65 of that particular tariff if you're looking for the exact one. Um, it has a per kilowatt charge of 23 pence, 23.53 uh, uh, pence per kilowatt hour. Um, they have a standing charge, again, here in the east of England, your region may vary, of 47.25 pence. So again, the same chart, obviously the gas prices are exactly the same. So that's why the red box underneath the gas is the same as it was for Ecotris, uh, for Octopus. And we have a gas price, if we would have been on Eon, on that 12-month fixed contract of £554.28p. 
a saving of £241.26. So Eon, you'd save even more money than if you were on Octopus. Next, we have EDF. So again, exactly the same, a fixed contract. They call it the standard variable contract. It has a price of 26.01 pence per kilowatt hour and a standing charge of 45.93. So a slightly lower standing charge, but a slightly higher per kilowatt hour rate. Um, again, gas, £795.54. The cost for electricity on EDF would be £600.66, giving us a saving of £194.88. So again, slightly lower than Octopus, but still a saving of £194. So again, there is no situation here where that gas is going to be cheaper, no matter what the Daily Mail says. And finally, of the four that we're going to look at today is Ecotricity. Now, Ecotricity never claimed to be the cheapest provider out there. Um, they have a tariff called Ecotricity Green Energy. It has a, a price per kilowatt hour of 31.85 pence per kilowatt hour, and it has a standing charge of 50.85 pence per day. Now, when we compare them, you'll see the gas price, exactly as it was before, the cost for electricity for that period would be £725.22. So you can see there, there are actually two months of the year. So uh, in January and February, where your electricity costs would be more than your gas costs. But you're still making a saving overall of that six month period of £70.32p on the most expensive energy that I can find here in the UK. Now, I'm sure you're all going to fill the comments and say, there is this tariff and it's more expensive. There probably are, but these were the ones that, that I could find. So if you do know of a more expensive tariff and you want to know what the numbers are, then do hit me up in the comments and I will do my best to, uh, to run the numbers for you. But even with those two months and on the most expensive energy there is, you're still going to save £70 by being on Ecotricity and having a heat pump. So again, when we compare all four of these energy contracts over that six month period, you are still gonna save money no matter which one you choose. Now, obviously, I like the one that saves me the most money. So I would probably go with Eon if I was in that situation. But I'm sure you're already thinking, well, hang on a minute, you're just comparing the cost of running the heat pump versus your gas uses, but don't you use gas for cooking? Well, yes, I do. Um, and in fact, we have a gas hob. We still have a gas hob. And much as I'm trying to get rid of it, um, that's going to take a few more months. But yes, we have a gas hob for cooking. So I can actually measure how much gas we use um, for cooking. And just as an example, this is my gas bill from February. Um, the two colours you can see there, the hatched area at the bottom of the graph, that is the standing charge. That is what you pay no matter how much gas you use. Um, and then we use a very, very tiny bit of gas. Um, the total bill, including the standing charge, is about £10, of which about £3 a month of that is actual gas usage. So if we deduct that, now I'm not going to go back through all four vendors and make you, uh, make you look at all the numbers again, but we'll just do it for Octopus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5% off of the gas numbers. It's probably more like 1% or even actually less than 1% of the gas usage for cooking. But let's be fair, let's give gas the best uh, option we can here. So we're gonna take 5% off the gas numbers. Um, everything else is gonna stay the same. So our gas price would reduce to 755 pounds and 77 pence. And our electricity cost would remain as it was before, 595 pounds. So instead of making about 200 pounds uh, savings, we're only gonna make 160 pounds of savings in a six month period. So again, um, comparing gas to electricity, electricity wins every single time. Now, just to put that into graph form for you, this is comparing gas on Octopus. You will notice in that second month, in that coldest month of the year, in fact, if I go back, if I go back to there, you can see gas was £1.25 pence cheaper in, ja in January 2025. And that's because it was a really cold month and we used an awful lot of electricity. But still, we don't look at what it costs for one month's usage. We look at it across the cost of an entire period, in this in case, six months, and we can see we're still making 160 pounds saving across that six month period. 
But what about the ROI? What about my return on my investment? So if you look at all my numbers and you say, I'm going to get a heat pump. Well, the first thing I should say is, don't throw out a perfectly good gas boiler to get a heat pump because you're working on the return on investment. Obviously, if you've got to replace your gas boiler, it's come to the end of its life, pretty much like mine was when I replaced it with it with the heat pump, um, then that's a perfectly good time to get a heat pump. But don't throw out a perfectly good working system unless it is costing you an absolute fortune because we don't calculate ROI on a gas boiler. Nobody is sitting there going, well, if I were to get a new gas boiler, it's, gonna, it's not going to save you anything. Gas boilers do not have a return on investment. But for whatever reason, if you're installing greener technology, the people seem to think that you have to have an ROI. So your gas boiler is never going to pay for itself. A new gas boiler is never going to pay for itself. But a heat pump is expected to. So what do we need to do to calculate an ROI on a heat pump? Well, the first thing is let's project those numbers out across an entire year. So this is what it would look like um, if we were to, to look at each of those four individual energy companies plus gas, what would be our costs for an entire year? Now, the second half of the year is generally slightly more efficient than the first half of the year. January, February is when we get the really cold times. Um, it does start to get colder in November and December and the heating starts to come on more. But generally, the second half of the year is, uses slightly less energy than the first half of the year. So if we look at these, you know, we'd be looking at a gas bill of around about £1,400. Uh, if we were on Octopus, we'd be looking at just over £1,000. If we were looking at Ecotricity, probably somewhere in a region of about £1,300. So if we take those savings from each of those four energy contracts, you know, what would it actually take to give us a return on investment on a heat pump? Well, you know, it's quite a long period of time. Um, if you were an octopus making about, uh, say, about £400 a year in savings, it would be about 10 years. And this is based on the price that I paid for my heat pump, which was for the heat pump, the new cylinder, and uh, to change out my radiators. Um, I paid about £37.90 uh, overall for that whole system and that was fully installed and removing the old gas boiler as well so if we are looking at a pure return on investment with the savings we're going to make we'll be looking at about 10 years to pay off the heat pump uh, 8.7 if we were on edf about 10 nearly 11 years on eon and a massive 29.9 if we were on ecotricity but the reality is we don't measure return on investment for a boiler so why would we need to do it for a heat pump but if you wanted to know what the numbers were that's what they look like. So that concludes my sermon for today. Hopefully this information is of use to you. Now the reality is the numbers I've given you here are the worst case scenario and nobody who installs a heat pump should be on a standard tariff. Now I understand that some people can't get a working smart meter which might exclude them from those variable tariffs. But if you do have a smart meter, you do have access to smart tariffs, um, a heat pump makes a huge amount of sense financially. Now I'm sure loads of you are going to jump in the comments and tell me all the mistakes I've made. Please do. I'd love to have that conversation with you. I hope you found this interesting. I hope these numbers make sense. And I hope that this finally puts to bed the myths that, you know, a gas boiler will be cheaper than a heat pump if you're on a standard or, or a variable tariff, because it's just not true. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye bye.